Hi families, my name is Holly Compton and I'm the TK to sixth grade Math Tosa in Manhattan Beach. And today we are going to do a different kind of story problem. So if you are just tuning in, it's really important to make sure to stay with me through the parent portion of this video because today is going to actually be a pretty challenging story problem for the kids, or at least I hope because we want our kids to have a nice challenge. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start off with is a number talk. And in our number talk today, we're actually going to be finding a change that we don't know. So I'm gonna show you right now what that looks like when it's written out. So um, in this problem here, there's a join happening. So this is a join because we're adding, but we don't know what the change is. So this is called a join change unknown. Um, so some of your kids may think back to what we have done in class. Remember, this is still a number talk, so we're hoping that they're solving mentally. Um, we used these guys in class. These are little math tools. They're cubes. They come apart. Um, so many of them may draw upon their experience of they know this is 20. Um, and they, they may know that if they take off four, the other piece would have to be... 16, right? So they can actually think about if I have 20 all together and one piece is four, the other piece must be 16. A lot of them will know that because they know four plus six makes 10. So they, they're going to think about friends of 10. Now I'm holding some other tools in my hand right now because um, we are in triage mode. We are in quarantine. So we don't have these at home more than likely. So what I'm thinking you may have on hand that you could use are things like these little pom-poms or uh, popsicle sticks or this is probably something everybody has um, pasta so you can just grab a big bag of pasta and these can become math tools they don't have to be fancy like the ones i have here okay so a lot of them are going to think all right i know my my uh four plus six makes 10 and if i had another one that would make 20 so the answer here must be 16. So they'll probably approach it like that. The next question I'm gonna ask them is really getting to be pretty challenging. So it's going to be nine, oops, let me see my black marker. Nine plus what makes 35? Okay, so they may use a strategy like the math tool in their mind, referring back to that from when they were a kid, uh, in their classroom. So maybe they have um, the knowledge of what 35 looks like. So 35 is made out of three tens and five ones. And maybe they would think about if one of them was nine, so this purple one I just made into nine, then the other pieces have to be 20 and then six. They may think about it like that, but maybe because it's getting kind of complicated now to think about maybe all those tools in their head, they might actually think about a number line now. Um, and they may think about the space between nine and 35. This is all we're really trying to do, is just find the distance between nine and 35 to figure out that change. Many, many of your kids have learned in class through discussions with one another that it's, it's um, easier sometimes, depends on who you're talking about, to jump to 10 and then go from there. We've been working all around 10 this year. Um, so then some kids may just know that they can jump 25 more to get to the number 35. Most likely, most won't do that, though. Most likely, um, some kids will say, all right, I can jump another 10, and now I'm at 10 plus 10 is 20. And then maybe somebody will say, well, it's only 15 from 20 to 35, but most likely not. Most likely, let me make this a little bit longer. Um, most likely, kids are going to say, I'm going to jump another 10 because we see lots of jumps of 10. And I'm going to do 20 plus 10 is 30. And then more than often, they'll say 30 plus 5 is 35. So they'll be able to make that connection. So all in all, the answer is up here in the hops. 
So you want to really make sure your child knows where the answer is because here's where the mistake happens. So we'll say, oh, what is the answer? And then lots of times they'll say, it's 35. Uh -uh. Ah, we have to make sure, oh, they know that the answer is actually in the hops. So the distance from 9 to 35 is 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 1. So that would be 25, 26. So there's lots of ways they'll approach it in their minds, but I'm just showing, I'm giving you some of the background of what we did in class um, from what they may draw on mentally. All right, so I'm gonna show you now the story that we're gonna look at. Um, so this story is called a join change unknown problem type. So again, this is a harder problem type. So make sure you're really having your kid think about the story. We never, never tell our kids this is addition or this is subtraction, and I hope today you see why. All right, so this is called pinwheels. Mrs. Barney had some pinwheels. Then she bought some more at the store. Now she has this number of pinwheels. How many pinwheels did Mrs. Barney buy at the store? Okay, so we're gonna have a couple different number choice sets. Um, the reason I've been solving the first set of numbers is because that is the set of numbers that is the first grade grade level standard. So when they leave first grade, we need them to know how to solve this one. The next um, sets of numbers are like bonuses for our kids, right? So we want to make sure they can do this set and that we're not just jumping into the last set so we can say, oh, my kid did the last set. Look how smart they are. So we really need them to do this one and then bonus for the rest, right? All right. So now we really have to focus in on making those um, connections to what's happening in the story. So Mrs. Barney had eight pinwheels. Okay. So now's the time to get your math tools. Mrs. Barney had eight pinwheels. Whoop, there it is. Then she bought some more at the store. Now she has 20 pinwheels. Okay, so now she has 20 pinwheels. So, sorry, I just had to jump off and get my um, cubes. So now she has 20 pinwheels. So this is what she had, and now she has 20. How many did she buy at the store? So this is a very confusing, very tricky problem type. So be, practice patience, use a smile, make sure you say, oh, I love learning this alongside of you instead of I'm not good at this, I'm not really sure. Make sure you're expressing lots of um, enjoyment even if you have to fake it till you make it. <laughs> all right, so they might think about it as that. So they may think, all right, well, if she has eight, she has 20 now, then the answer must be 12, right? See how I'm doing that? Um, math tools are so, so important. Um, if they can understand this, then you can move on to this number set or this number set. But please be cautious. Only have your child choose the number set that feels right to them. There shouldn't be any stress. There shouldn't be crying. If there is, please make sure to stop and um, take a break and then reevaluate and use a more appropriate number set. All right. So with that being said, it's time to go get those kids. See you back here in just a second. Hey kids, it's Mrs. Compton and Chip. I um, brought him back because I heard that a lot of you really like seeing Chip. So here he is. He's been for a nice long walk this morning, so he is tired. So Chip, I hope you're ready to learn, but you look like you're ready for a nap. I don't know, what do you think? All right. So kids, the first thing we're going to do is a number talk today, but it's going to be a little different from the last number talks we've done. So are you ready? We are going to see how you might solve this. Four plus what makes 20? How would you do that? Take your think time. So if you need more think time, it's okay to pause it in any of the videos. Okay, so it's okay to pause if you're not ready yet, but if you are, I'd love to hear the answer. All right, what would you say? Four plus what makes 20? One, two, three, tell me. Chip, what do you think? He said 16. Um, Chip, how did you know it was 16? Oh, you used your fingers and your toes? 
Oh, he used his fingers and his toes to help him, I think. Did anyone else use their fingers and their toes? I was talking to Jake the other day. Hi, Jake. I was talking to Jake and he was telling me about using his fingers and toes to problem solve and I love that. So maybe you thought about that or everybody say bye Chip. Bye Chip. Maybe you thought about these from class and you were like, oh, I remember if we had 20 um, and I had four, then I would need 16 more to get to 20. So maybe you thought about it like that. I'm gonna ask you guys another one. So how about this one? Nine plus what makes, hmm, let's make it a good challenge. Let's, everybody loves a good challenge. Let's do 35. Okay, everybody use your think time. What do you think? Nine plus what makes 35? All right, don't forget, you can pause it if you need to, but on the count of three, when you're ready, everybody tell me, one, two, three. Hmm, what did you say? Did you say 26? Let's see, I'm gonna guess maybe you used a number line. We used lots and lots of number lines in class, right? So maybe you thought about it like this, nine, plus what would give us 35. So we're trying to find this part right here. Okay, so maybe you did, I'm gonna take some guesses since you're not here. So, all right, raise your hand if you added one more to nine in your head and you're like, ooh, I could make a 10 right there. All right, let's see. Hmm. Did anybody jump all the way from 10 to 35? That's a lot of big, that's a lot of um, jumps in there, right? Lots of little ones in there between 10 and 35. But let's say we weren't sure. So let's say, hmm, maybe I want to go from 10 to 20. So I'm going to add another 10. So 10 plus 10 is 20. And maybe you were like, well, I'm not there yet. So I'm going to add another 10. And 20 plus 10 is 30. And maybe you were like, ooh, we are almost there, so I just need one hop of five. And here is my answer. It's in the hops. All right, so 10, 20, 25, 26. So this is our answer right here in the hops. So nine plus 26 equals 35. Okay, so here we are. Here's our story today. They're all about pinwheels. Now, I have a picture of pinwheels, just in case you don't know what they are. There we go. Those are the pinwheels that kind of blow in the wind when you take them outside. Um, so those are fun little things to play with. All right, so Mrs. Barney, hi Mrs. Barney, say hi to Mrs. Barney, she's at first grade at Penny Camp. Mrs. Barney had some pinwheels. Then she bought some more at the store. Okay, so imagine Mrs. Barney already had some pinwheels. Now she's buying some more. Now she has, hmm, pinwheels. How many pinwheels did Mrs. Barney buy at the store? Okay, so let's check out this story with some numbers. So here is our first set of numbers. We have eight and 20, or maybe you're gonna solve with 16 and 60. Or maybe you're gonna solve with 28 and 120. All right, kids, it's time for you to get your teachers. Okay, now we know our sets of numbers. So let's unpack this story. So Mrs. Barney had eight pinwheels. Okay, everybody imagine Mrs. Barney has eight pinwheels. Then she bought some more at the store. Okay, so can you imagine going to the store and buying some more pinwheels? Does it tell us how many more that Mrs. Bar Barney bought? It doesn't tell us any more. It doesn't tell us how many. It just says she bought some more. And now she has 
20 pennies. So we know how many she started with and we know how many she has at the end. What are we trying to find out? Let's see, we are trying to find out how many pinwheels Mrs. Barney bought at the store. All right, so kids, it's time for you to check in with your teacher. How are you gonna turn in this work to her? I hope to see you back next time and maybe, who knows, Chip might come back too. See you later guys, bye.